As far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to build something in VR and bring it to the real world. The tech has gotten so affordable, that dream is easier than ever before. A few years back, I finally got my headset and I had my first try at sculpting in VR. I decided my first VR project was going to be a sculpture for my cousin based on her cat. So stick around to see how I finish sculpting it, then how I take it into real life, and finally how I make it functional too. Before this project, I'd only ever used Blender. Sculpting in VR was just as cool as I'd imagined. Being able to physically move around your sculpture while you have access to all of the 3D tools is awesome. Really, the only downside is having a headset strapped to your face for a few hours. Once I was happy with the sculpt, I put some paint on it so that I could get a clearer picture of what the final product was gonna look like. Even though I wanted to do this purely in VR, I did have to open up Blender at the end. I needed to hollow out the core so that I could put all of the electronics, and I needed it to fit perfectly with a platform that I also designed in Blender. Once that was all done, I just sent it to print. My printer was feeling really cooperative that day, and it worked first try. With the cap printed, I moved on to the internal components. I used a servo motor wired to both an Arduino and Switch. All of these came bundled in a starter kit that I bought on Amazon. I programmed the board to rotate the servo back and forth 90 degrees whenever turned on. The whole thing was only about 10 lines of code and they were basically copy and pasted from the tutorial that came with the kit. With the internals out of the way, I moved on to the clock that he was holding in the reference art. I wanted the clock that he was holding to be functional as well, so I did some research. I didn't know you could buy clocks specifically to insert into your projects, but it turns out that those are super common. Once I found one with the correct dimensions, I built a frame to house it. The frame would be mounted to the cat with the clock face being removable to update the time or replace the batteries. For the build process of the clock frame, I laser cut a bunch of rings and glued them up to a base. I made sure to sand everything smooth, and then I countersunk a screw hole in the middle that mounts directly onto the cat. All I'm doing here is test fitting the placement, marking it, and getting ready to place a threaded insert. If I could have a do-over in this project, I'd make sure to put those holes in when I first designed the model and not as an afterthought by drilling them. The threaded inserts are so much stronger that way, but this ended up working okay for me. For the collar, I had a bunch of leatherworking tools from a previous project that I thought I could use, but I wanted to see if I could use silicone instead of leather. It turns out it works pretty well, once I had the strip trimmed to the right length, I made the holes with a leather hole punch and I fastened it together with a leather rivet. The benefit of the silicone is that I can stretch it over the cat to slip it on and off. This is the part where I try to hide the fact that this is 3D printed. In order to do it, I'm using two-part epoxy sculpt. Once I have it properly mixed, I use it to smooth out the areas where the print lines are most evident. After that, it's a lot of sanding and priming. There's a point of diminishing returns, but you can sink tons of hours sanding and priming to get a near flawless finish. I probably called it quits after about three rounds of priming and sanding, but I'll show you how I hit all of my mistakes once we get to the painting step. At this point, the clock insert finally arrived. 
and while it's a perfect fit, the clock face doesn't really match. So I'm using a Cree cut to design a new clock face and then reassembling the insert. All right, remember how I said that I hid the 3D print lines with paint? Well, the secret is heavy texture. I used a really thick bodied acrylic, the kind that artists use to capture their brush strokes, and I applied it heavy with an almost stamped on effect. This works great for a cat because it loosely mimics the fur, but these textured styles work great for anything that's meant to be organic in nature. The final piece for this project was the base. I used the same dimensions from when I hollowed out the cat so that the base could snap into the cat and carved out a channel for the cable to come out of. I debated making this battery powered, but that's always an easy upgrade to make in the future if my cousin wants it. And yeah, I finally finished. Somehow, this project had me using every crafting skill I knew and taught me a bunch of new ones too. I'm super happy with how this project turned out. If you liked it and you wanna see more in the future, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time, bye. Thank you.